Today's episode of The Overwhelmed Brain is brought to you by Kaya Biotics. If you want a healthy gut, take the probiotic that's been certified organic and free of additives, fillers, or binders. Visit Kaya Biotics, K-A-Y-A Biotics.com and enter the promo code BRAIN during checkout and get $15 off your first order. Are you annoyed by affirmations? Are you tired of that same old rehashed personal growth advice that all seems to boil down to think positively and all your problems will go away. If affirmations feel like lies and positive thinking feels like denial, then I want you to get ready. The Overwhelmed Brain is here to help you create the life you want now. Hello and welcome to The Overwhelmed Brain. My name is Paul Coliani. I am a personal empowerment coach and this is the show where I help you tackle life's toughest challenges. I want to help you increase your emotional intelligence, strengthen your self-worth and self-esteem and empower you so that you can make decisions that are right for you. Everything I talk about on the show is my personal opinion and is meant for informational and educational purposes only. Always consult a medical or psychological professional before making any changes that could affect your physical or mental health. All right, the first topic, I have to talk about this. I received an email regarding what I said on an earlier episode about social anxiety and social awkwardness, and that was about my take on politics. (laughs) And during that episode, I'm like, I'm not going to talk about politics. I don't want to bring politics into this show. I don't want to have this kind of discussion and then have an onslaught of emails saying, you support this person, you don't support that person. I'm not going to get into that, and I never will. (laughs) Not on this show, at least. Perhaps you'll hear me talk about it on some other show in some other lifetime. Uh, But quite honestly, I don't even like talking about politics. And the fact that I brought it up on an episode recently, it doesn't leave a good taste in my mouth. But I didn't make it about politics. I made it about the emotional situation that I went through when I was um, approached by someone there and I felt socially awkward and then I was rude and then I had to deal with my own thoughts and feelings about me being rude to someone else and uh, it, it was enlightening for me to go through that experience. But I did receive an email and I want to read it to you because I need to respond to it just to make sure that not only this person understands uh, a perspective but also anyone else out there who might think that I maybe don't care. You'll know what I mean in a minute. Uh, This person, I'm going to call him uh, Sam, wrote, Hi, I recently stumbled onto your podcast, specifically the one about broken tools, and found it enlightening and relatable. Over the past two weeks, I've been listening as much as I can, but unfortunately stumbled onto one yesterday in which you repeatedly expressed your disinterest in politics, and I was quite disappointed. As an immigrant of color in the U.S. whose native country has been and continues to be greatly affected by U.S. foreign policy, i.e. politics, I don't feel I have the option to be disengaged from politics and furthermore find the consequences of governmental and social politics to be a great contributor to my stress and anxiety. I am of the opinion that disengagement from politics is a privilege that millions of us cannot afford and that our lives are adversely affected by people of privilege ignoring the deliberate and collateral damage that politics has on millions of us. That was what he said. So Sam, thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that you you were disappointed. Let me just say this. I know where you're coming from. And I'm going to preface what I'm saying with this. I still don't like politics. Now, that doesn't mean I don't care. And that's the difference. The difference is I don't like watching them I don't like watching the debates. I don't like going to the rallies, but I still do. (laughs) So that's where the difference is, is that I can tell you all day long that um, I don't like watching politicians lie on TV. It drives me crazy. I know they're lying, and I know that a lot of people know they're lying, yet they still get away with what they get away with. I'm not going to cite any specific political person, but... You watch it, and it drives me crazy. So I don't like watching it, yet I still watch it. Not all of it, but I still watch a lot of it. And any issue that interests me, I will research. I will learn about. I will figure out where 
a certain political figure stands on that issue before I vote. Because yes, I vote because I care. So I sound like I'm being a little bit in your face and I don't mean to. What I'm saying is that I absolutely have compassion for your plight. I absolutely understand that you are in a position that you feel you're being slighted and you probably are being slighted, especially with everything going on nowadays and political climate is very charged. But just like I don't like divorce, I still study divorce. I still try to understand all the facets of it and the psychological aspects and the makeup of it. And I also try to understand how people can feel better through it and um, maybe even prevent it. Or if they have to go through it, what is the healthiest way to get through it? All these aspects around divorce, but I still don't like divorce. It's still unpleasant to be around. It's still unpleasant to be in. <laughs> it's not pleasant to be in a divorce. Yet I still learn about it and I still make the decisions based on the fact finding and the understanding as much as I can about it. So Sam, I just wanted to express this to you really quickly and anyone else that may have thought that, oh, he doesn't like politics, so therefore he doesn't learn about the issues and therefore he must not care. I absolutely do care and that's why I learn as much as I can and when I don't have time to learn, my girlfriend fills me in with everything because she looks at everything political and fills me in. Believe me, I hear it all. <laughs> so I want to tell you, Sam, that I appreciate and respect your position. And believe me, what affects you affects me. I mean, we can all look at these things and say, what affects you affects me. Yeah, but I don't have the same issues as you do. Yes, but you're my friend. You're my family. You're my brother. You're my sister. What affects you affects me. If you vote for that candidate and I vote for this candidate and my candidate wins and you walk away sad because the issues that your candidate was going to fight for and change and make the world better if your candidate was elected, then you're not happy. You're not getting your values met. Yet I am. Yet how can I be happy if you're not happy? You're my friend. You're my brother. You're my sister. How can I be happy if you're not happy? This is why I don't like politics and the division it creates. That's what I was talking about in that episode. It just creates this division. I mean, not the politics part, but the who wins part. I mean, the politics part does too, but politics to me is the game. Someone gets on TV and says everything that we want to hear, but we have to do our own due diligence. We have to do our own fact finding. We have to do our own research. We have to make sure that who's in power has our best interest in mind, but we all have different best interests. So that's why we don't all vote for the same people. But let me just bring this back to the disengagement that you're talking about. I'm not disengaged. I'm just not engaged in the drama because politics seems to be all about drama. And then the campaigns seem to be more about smearing others than being pro anything. It just seems like there's more propaganda and hyperbole than standing up for something. I mean, it's out there. Don't get me wrong. It's out there. But I just don't like it. <laughs> so... Sam, thank you so much for writing. I'm probably voting for the very people that support people that are in your position. So if that makes you feel just a tad bit less stress and anxious, I hope it does, then maybe I'm on the right path. I want you to be happy. I want me to be happy. I want it to be win-win. doesn't always work out that way, but we do our best. Thanks for writing, Sam. I hope this makes sense. We'll be right back. We're going to talk about something else. No more politics this episode. <laughs> we'll be right back. I've been waking up in the mornings feeling more energy than ever. <laughs> I mean, I've been waking up and I've had that I'm awake feeling. And I don't remember having that I'm awake feeling too often. And just for the past few weeks, I've been feeling this. And it's I'm definitely not complaining about that. I'm very happy about that. But it's odd to me that I've gone a lot of my life without having this feeling. And um, even the past few years... I would wake up not having this feeling. And I'm wondering, how, where is this coming from? I haven't even exercised as much as I usually do. I did give up caffeine quite a while ago, but that was months ago. So I'm thinking, where is this coming from? 
And the only thing I can attribute it to is the Kaya probiotics treatment that I'm on. I take two of the Candida formula of Kaya Biotics. And like I said in the last episode, things seem to be improving in my system. And I don't know if it's a direct correlation. I don't know if the probiotics are actually the cause of the, the positive changes I'm going through. But since I've started their um, Candida supplement, I, I have noticed the changes. Now, I highly recommend research. I highly recommend research. And before I started taking these probiotics, I wanted to find out if the Candida formula was going to be right for me. And I found some interesting facts about Candida and how it grows and how a high sugar diet can cause that. And I feel like I've given up a lot of the sugars, except I didn't count pasta and bread. And um, realizing that, I, I thought, well, maybe I do have some overgrowth in there. And maybe the Candida formula will help in some way. The thing is, I didn't even know I needed help because I was so used to some of the feelings that I had. Like um, not being able to sleep well and, you know, a lot of fatigue during the day and, and stomach acid and uh, some food intolerances that I had. I just got used to that. I thought that was normal. But since I've been on this plan, those have decreased and being able to sleep throughout the night and then to wake up feeling energized, it is not normal for me. I mean, if you know me, I go to bed very late and I like to sleep in when possible. Those, I'm not one of those early risers. Uh, but the problem is when you sleep in, sometimes you throw your biorhythms off or something and you never seem to catch up on the sleep and you never get enough sleep or something. I don't know, but the fatigue hits me and I have my whole day like that, which is why I used to drink a lot of caffeine. So the, the plan that I'm on now, the two capsules a day, I'm going to continue doing that and um, maybe it's right for you too. I, I recommend you go to kayabiotics.com. That's K-A-Y-A. And the word biotics, B-I-O-T-I-C-S dot com. And look at the research they've done. They've got three different product lines, the Candida formula, the Multiback formula, and the Body Plus formula, all with different duties, so to speak, in your body. And one of the reasons I wanted to talk about Kaya Biotics on my show is because they're one of the few that I actually trust. They're one of the few that seems to be doing things right they're vegan, they're gluten-free, they're hypoallergenic, they're certified organic, and they have 100% high-quality ingredients. In fact, I love that they only include bacteria that has been scientifically studied to be effective and directed at a specific function because there's a lot of formulas out there that they just throw everything in there and hope it works. These guys, Kaya Biotics has done their job, and I trust them, and I take them every day, and I want you to check them out. Go to kayabiotics.com. Make sure to enter the promo code BRAIN during checkout. That way you can save $15 off your first order. And I didn't even mention their sustainable packaging. They're doing everything right. Kayabiotics.com. Use the promo code BRAIN at checkout. Get this treat for your gut. All right, I'm going to give you a taste of something that is unpleasant, and it's going to be a bit unusual for an audio-only show. Are you ready for this? <laughs> it is this. I'm going to um, say something to you that's going to sound like I'm upset. Here we go. You didn't tell me you were going to do that. All right, let me give you a break. <laughs> that was an uncomfortable silence. I did that on purpose. That's the silent treatment. That is something that uh, some of us have been known to do, including myself, when we are upset, when we don't want to talk about it, or when we don't want to bring it up because we'll get more upset, or we want to make you feel bad. When someone gives you the silent treatment, there's many reasons for it. I used to do it uh, when I was married to make my wife feel guilty. I wanted her to feel guilty because if she felt guilty enough, she would change her behavior. That was my belief system. I wanted her to feel bad for her behavior. If you haven't listened to my show a while, um, I talk about in several episodes how my, my wife is an emotional eater and I had a real challenge with that and I would make her feel bad for eating sweets and junk food. 
Uh, it's not something I'm proud of. It's not something I'm glad I did. But um, I had to get through that. I had to heal from my high judgment, my high standards that I had in my marriage, my emotionally abusive ways, because that was very emotionally abusive. The silent treatment he is emotional abuse. That is one component of it. But it's, if someone said, you know, that person gave me the silent treatment, well, let me say this. 90% of the time, it's emotional abuse. The other 10% of the time, it's something that you're trying to process. Because the silent treatment has many factors, many facets about it. It could be someone that finds something out and just needs to process it. Like, what just happened? What did you do? You called who? You talked to who? You said what? You did what? Oh my God, I need to sit with this in my own mind. I need to reflect. I need to think about what implications this has on me, on our relationship, on our whatever, on our future. And so we might need to sit with that. I would, I would think that there's a lot of that that goes on too. That's not emotional abuse. That is, hey, give me some space because I need to process this. So I'm not talking about that. I think it's okay to do that. And I think it's okay to tell whoever you need space from that you need space. Hey, give me some space. I need to process this. This is new information. I don't know what to do with this. I don't know what this means. I need some silence. I need some space. And you take that. And hopefully the person that you're telling this to gives you that space, gives you that freedom to be alone. That's important. You need the freedom to be alone can't always get it. I mean, sometimes there's kids, sometimes there's obligations. But like I've said in the past, even 10 minutes in the bathroom is a little freedom to be alone. You just need some processing time sometimes. So that kind of silent treatment, I think that's very healthy. I think that's okay. There's another kind of silent treatment, which is I might get so upset that I, I'll do something I regret. There's that kind of silent treatment too. If you jump into that space where you just are so upset that if you say anything right now, you might hurl a glass bottle through a window or worse, then maybe you need that silent time too. But again, I go back to the more productive comment that you might tell the person, which is, I need time to myself. I need time to process this. I think when you're going to give someone the silent treatment, that's a fair comment to make. I need time to process. I'm so upset right now. You, you could say that. You may, not, you may not say that at all. You may not need to say that or you may not want to say that and that's fine. But to ask for that freedom to be with yourself, by yourself, is something that you have every right to have and you deserve it. You deserve that if you need processing time, if you need cool down time. Perfectly healthy, perfectly normal in my opinion. So aside from that, let's talk about the silent treatment that has a different intention. The intention is wanting the other person to feel bad. That is an entirely different silent treatment. That's where emotional abuse steps in. And this is where a relationship can degrade terribly. This is where a relationship can dissolve, diminish, just pick a D word, and start being destroyed bit by bit because someone chooses to be silent to hurt another person instead of be expressive and state what the problem is. When I was married, my problem was I didn't like when she ate junk food and sweets because I knew that she would gain weight and I knew that I would become less and less attractive to her. I had these thoughts, I'll admit them. They were shallow, they were unkind, they were unhealthy, they were just sometimes mean. And I would be judgmental toward her behavior. And because I was so judgmental, there is a point where you can only judge so much where that person gets more and more upset at you for all these judgments where you finally just shut down and be silent because you don't know what else to do, you don't know what else to say. So that can happen is that I got to the point where I didn't know what else to say. I didn't know what else to do. And I knew she wasn't changing. So what I was going to do was withhold love. I'm going to withhold affection. I'm going to withhold connection. I'm going to make sure that you don't feel love, connection, support, nurturing, or anything from me with the intention that you'll feel bad enough to change because that is effective. 
It's not, but it is effective to make them feel bad. It's effective, but it's not effective in the long run. And it's not effective in causing change in them, at least change that sticks. There are some people that will change in hopes that they don't get the silent treatment anymore, but that doesn't usually last because the person who changes doesn't really change for themselves and they're doing it to get a need met from someone else instead of fulfilling something that they want to do internally. Like if my wife really wanted to make these changes for herself, I mean, she did. She wanted to make these changes. She knew she had a problem with emotional eating. That was her challenge. I made it our challenge. I made it my challenge. And that was a big problem. As soon as I made her problems my problems, that's when it became a problem in the relationship. As soon as I made it my mission to help her stop emotional eating, that became a huge component of the emotional abuse in our relationship. Had I just said, hey, that's your issue and I'm here to help you if you need me, but you know, certainly I understand that's your issue and I won't give you any grief about it. I won't comment on it. I won't give you the dirty looks about it because that's your issue and I know it's a challenge for you and it's hard enough for you to deal with it on your own, let alone someone else judging you and telling you what you need to do and telling you what to eat and when to eat and how to eat. You don't need all of that. I wish I was the healthier person to be that way for her because that would have shown her that she had someone in her, in her corner. The silent treatment, however, showed her that she's alone on this and I'm looking down on her because she hasn't succeeded yet. I'm going to look down on you and think that you're inferior because you haven't changed yet. You are the problem. You are causing all the strife in our relationship. So here I am withholding love, withholding connection, withholding support, and basically saying nothing. It's all silent. And she has to add on top of her own challenges with what she's going through. On top of that, now she has someone that she has committed to looking down on her as if she were a piece of crap. I mean, let's call it for what it is. I would bet that's how she felt. She just felt like a piece of crap, unworthy in my eyes, unlovable in my eyes. And I'm telling you this today because if you do the silent treatment or you have the silent treatment done uh, to you, at least in the emotionally abusive way, this is what they're going through. She was unhappy. She was starting to get depressed. She was losing her passion for living, for life. She didn't know what to do with herself. And me, being the angry, silent person I was, hoping that she'd feel guilty enough, hoping that she'd feel bad enough to change for me, I saw this progress or digress that she went through, getting more depressed, getting more unhappy, becoming less and less passionate. I saw that and still pointed my finger at her saying, look how she's fading. Look what she's doing. She is not doing enough for herself. And even as I say this, I'm pointing my fingers to get back into that old dysfunctional role I was in, pointing my finger at her in my mind's eye back then, pointing my finger at her, saying all the stuff that she's doing to herself, yet I was doing it to her. I was not connecting with her. I was not loving her. I was not supporting her. I was not that one and only person that she committed to that was supposed to love her and honor her and be that one that she could feel safe with in my arms. I was that person that she was supposed to feel like the world was falling apart, but as long as I was there, everything would be okay. I was supposed to be that person for her, and I wasn't. I was silent, and I was silent because I was so wrapped up in my own judgments and my own anger toward her that instead of dealing with my own judgments and dealing with my own anger and looking inward to realize that it wasn't her emotional eating that was a problem in the relationship, it was my judgments about her behavior that was a problem in the relationship. It was my anger about her behavior. It was my lack of acceptance of her behavior. It was my unwillingness to be expressive, to say, hey, this is how it's affecting me. 
It was my inability to express myself because I was a coward. I did not want to express myself to her because if I did, she might see me for the B-A-S-T-A-R-D I was. She might see me for that. And if that were the case, she might leave me. And my fear of rejection, my fear of abandonment kicked in. And I didn't want that to happen. I needed someone there to love me. I wanted her to love me and support me and connect with me and be everything that I needed. But I couldn't do the same for her. I chose to close up and close her off and withhold love, withhold affection, withhold sex, withhold everything just because I was angry at her behavior. This is so destructive. This is the downfall of my relationship, the downfall of my marriage. If you're listening and, and getting the silent treatment done to you, maybe this is the episode they need to hear. This is what destroys the relationship. The person getting the silent treatment, it's not your fault. You might have done something or be doing something that caused them to be silent to make you feel bad in the first place. You might have done something. There, there may be a legitimate reason they're giving you the silent treatment. Again, I'm talking about the emotionally abusive silent treatment. There may be a legitimate reason. But to be in a relationship where someone doesn't express what's really going on inside of them and the maybe the anger they feel towards you or the disappointment or anything they feel towards you because they don't want to share it for, for whatever reason because they're too afraid of what you'll say or do. If that's the case, if that's what you're experiencing, your relationship will dissolve and a, a huge rift will be created and it may get to the point of no return. Now, I'm talking about any relationship. This could be brother and sister. This could be husband and wife. This could be husband and husband. This could be boyfriend and girlfriend, girlfriend and girlfriend. It doesn't matter. Any relationship on the planet, when you give someone the silent treatment with the intention to hurt them in some way or make them feel guilty in some way, in hopes, this is why we do it typically, in hopes that they will change, that they will somehow be enlightened by your silence to think, wow, that person's giving me silence. They must be upset with me. So here's what I'm going to do to change and make myself a better person. It usually doesn't work that way. It usually works in the way of, wow, you're giving me the silent treatment. I must not be lovable. I must not be worthy. I must not be worthy of your love. I must not be worthy of anyone's love. Because if you don't love me, and we're supposed to be good friends, a good partner, good relative, if you don't love me, then maybe I am unlovable. Maybe I am unworthy. And that makes me feel sad, so I'm going to get more depressed. And we look at that, and, and how is that an incentive to change? The silent treatment has the opposite effect of what we think it will. When we do the silent treatment to someone else, we do make them feel bad. When we want them to change and we try to initiate that change through our silence, it actually causes them to feel worse and worse about themselves, about not being loved, about not being supported, that they'll probably go into a further downward spiral and the silent treatment will have the opposite effect than the original intention. This is so vital to understand if you do the emotionally abusive silent treatment or it's being done to you, is that the relationship has very little chance of survival if this is a continual thing. I'm not talking about a once a year thing. I'm talking about the silent treatment that people use as their coping mechanism, as something that they use to get through the harder moments, the harder discussions, the emotionally charged conversations. If you're using silence as a weapon against someone you care about, they will feel like they've been shot. And the outcome we want when we use this weapon is not the outcome we get. The outcome we want is for the other person to change or the other person to come to a realization that, oh, yes, I did something wrong. I'm so sorry. And I mean, we may hear those words every now and then. When we give someone the silent treatment, they may say, oh, tell me what I need to do so you, that you're not like this. Tell me what I need to do, to do to connect with you. What do I need to do? And when that happens, it's almost as if they are getting their fix. The person doing the silent treatment is getting their fix. The person doing the silent treatment might think, oh, good, that person got the message. 
my silence prompted them to want to change. So now we have this reinforcement that comes back to the person doing the silent treatment, and that reinforcement tells them, hey, it worked. But if you really think about the history of doing the silent treatment on someone else, think about all the times you did it. Afterward, did it make the relationship better and happier and more fulfilling and more passionate? Does the silent treatment amplify these things? Or does it disintegrate these things? Because this is what I see. I see the emotionally abusive silent treatment disintegrates these things. And as those disintegrate, the relationship starts to flounder. The relationship starts to dissipate. And pretty soon there's no more caring. There's no more love. Because one person's always angry and the other person's always wanting to figure out how to not make them angry. And it becomes a vicious, dysfunctional cycle that never ends. So there's a lot to unpack with the silent treatment, but I wanted to address the main problems, the main issue with this being a regular part of any relationship. When it's a regular part of the relationship, the relationship's usually not fulfilling in any way because now you have someone that simply isn't there and seems to be upset all the time. And as long as they're upset, then if they're upset and giving you the silent treatment, then what you're doing is trying to make them happy in some way which can teeter on the edge of being the supply for their narcissistic tendency. I'm not saying that everyone that does a silent treatment is narcissistic. I'm saying that there's a narcissistic tendency in there. And if they are looking for you to be that supply for them, for that narcissistic tendency, then that cycle usually doesn't end until someone steps out of it and says, whoa, I see what's going on here. How do I get out of this cycle? Uh, we got to say, no, I'm not going to do this anymore. I can't be a part of this. If you, the person giving me the silent treatment, really has a problem, then don't be silent. Be expressive. And this is something I told my girlfriend a long time ago because she would do this. When we first met, my girlfriend would give me silence for like a month you know, or two months. It wasn't like completely silent. I, would, I didn't walk around and hear nothing all day long. Um, it was lack of connection. She wouldn't give me eye contact and it would drive me crazy because I did all this healing and I got out of my own dysfunctional silent treatment behavior myself. And when I got into this new relationship, I didn't think I'd have to deal with that anymore because I had done so much healing and my girlfriend had done a lot of healing too. So I really thought that we had reached a new level and we were connecting and meeting at this new level and it was going to be like this exploding awesome relationship from the get-go, but it wasn't. (laughs) <laughs> it was more like I would say or do something that upset her, but I never found out until a month later that I upset her. And I went through a month of no connection, no eye contact, hardly anything, physical contact, just hardly anything. And I remember the first time this happened and I said, what is wrong? You haven't looked at me. You don't look at me. You don't connect with me. I don't feel any love from you. What is going on? And she said, nothing. Nothing. And I was like, no, that's wrong. I know something's happening. This is where you trust your instincts because you know what it feels like when everything is good. You know what that feels like. So you trust your instinct and you go, okay, something's not right here. I can feel it. I don't feel the connection. And you might even say some certain things. You used to always kiss me at this time of day or you used to always bring me lunch or whatever. And now you don't. Something has changed. And hopefully you have someone like my girlfriend who said, well, uh, I didn't really want to talk about it because I didn't want to upset you. I'm like, upset me? Well, well, you know, share this with me. I want you to upset me. I want you to tell me, you know, if if I have to get upset, that's fine. Let's just talk about this. She goes, well, what you said last month about, I don't know what it was, such and such, that made me really angry. I was like, a month? I'm trying to remember what it was about (laughs) going through history. And I said, what did I say? And she said, well, you said this, and it made me feel really angry. And I just thought, well, that's who you are. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. What did I say? And she would repeat it. And I said, so you thought I meant this? And she goes, well, didn't you? And I said, no, I, I didn't mean that at all. I, I, In fact, I feel the complete opposite. I feel like um, just like you felt about whatever it was. I figured out what it was about. And she said, really? 
I said, yeah. And plus, I'm, I'm sorry if it came across that way. I, I had no idea it came across that way. I'm, I'm really sorry. I didn't know you were dealing with it that way. And she suddenly felt better. And she breathed. And we talked. And we connected. And it was back to normal. And I'm thinking, a month went by. <laughs> we could have talked about this a month ago. And I said, well, you know, don't do that to me. Don't disconnect from me. But she did again. It happened like two or three more times. And I finally put the hammer down. I finally said, look. <laughs> I mean, I approached it a little easier by saying, hey, you've not been connecting with me. What's going on? It still took me some time, though. It took me several weeks after she went silent to really uh, tell her, look, you know, you haven't been connecting. Uh, what's going on? And again, she says, well, nothing but. And we talk about it. Great. And we get through it. And it usually is something that I might have to apologize for, but I didn't know I had to apologize for it. Or it was just complete misunderstanding that since we didn't talk about it, she just held on to. So like I said, the third time, I think, I put the hammer down and I said, this can't happen like this. You can't disconnect from me for a month because I walk around thinking you don't care. You don't love me. You don't even want me here. You don't even look at me. I can't live with someone that doesn't even look at me. I can't do it. And she goes, well, I just don't want to hurt your feelings. And I know I have to process this stuff. I'm like, I don't mind if you have to process something. It can take a day. It can take two days even. That's a long time for me. But don't let it go. In fact, if you have something to say to me that you know will upset me, then upset me. Do it. Make me angry. Do you think I'm going to go off and smack you or something? I mean, I don't know if I said that, but that's how I feel. It's like, why not make me angry? Let's talk about this. Let's get through this. She goes, well, I, I don't like to do that. I don't like to cause, you know, conflict like that. I don't want to make you upset. And I said, make me upset. I would rather have you get your upset out at me, make me angry or be angry at me if you have to. You know, blame me for something. Do something. I will take anything instead of a month of silence. I'll take anything. Yell at me. <laughs> you know, write me a note saying, this is the problem. This is the problem I have with you. This is the problem with what you said. This is how I feel about what you did. I said, bring it up because I would rather have us hash it out in the moment instead of having to feel like you don't love me for a month and I won't do it anymore. I, I just can't handle it anymore. I'm a touchy-feely kind of guy. I need to know there's a connection there. And finally, she started to get it. She said, so if I tell you something that upsets you, you don't mind? I was like, I'm sure it won't be pleasant, but I would rather be upset in the moment than have it drawn out for 30 days or more. I would rather just be upset and get it over with. And she goes, all right, but you know, you told me to do this. I'm like, yes, <laughs> I want you to do it. She goes, okay. And she's very trepidatious. And she said, okay, I'll do that. And I tell you what, so I don't know how many months later, something came up and she said, you know, you said this was okay and I'm going to do it. I was like, uh, what? You're going to do what? what? What's going on? She goes, you said when I'm upset about something or I'm angry about something that it's okay to tell you in the moment. I said, uh, yes. <laughs> okay. And then my, my ears got wide open and my mouth got shut. <laughs> I said, go ahead. And she told me and I said, Oh, thank you for sharing that. I didn't know that that's how you took it. You know, I forget what it was about again, but we had a really productive conversation for the first time where we could actually hash things out, talk about it and get through the moment and figure out what was misinterpreted, who felt hurt for what reason we could talk about it. It was that day, whatever happened to happen that day. And we talked about it that day. And we got through it that day. And I didn't have to endure a month of silence. And after our conversation, I said, thank you so much. This is so much better. I, I love it. Thank you for doing that. She goes, you're not upset about what I just said? I said, of course not. I need to hear this stuff. If you're feeling this way, then something I did or said was either misinterpreted or intentional. I don't think it was intentional to hurt you, but you know, let's talk about it. And when you have someone in your life that is willing to talk about these things, it's a lot easier. And I know a lot of people don't, but I'm here to say that you're better off talking about it as soon as possible, as soon as you've done your normal healthy processing on it, 
instead of going through the lengthy, painful silence of no connection and no love, because that's when the relationship falls apart. It starts to fall apart. And I told my girlfriend, I would rather go through an argument where it's so bad that we break up as opposed to staying with someone who doesn't even look at me. I would rather do that. It's the height of pain in a short period of time instead of a long duration of pain. I would rather have that short burst, that proverbial punch in the face, than that long duration of ignoring and feeling like I don't matter, feeling like I'm not worth anything. That's why I told her, let's just talk about it. Let's bring up the hard stuff, even if you fear that it, it could lead to a breakup. Let's bring it up. And that's how we communicate nowadays. Fortunately, we don't get into too many arguments, but when it happens, we hash it all out then. We bring it all up. We even ask, what does this mean for our future? We want to figure out what does it mean? Well, if it means that we can't live together, then let's talk about that now. Let's not think about it for days and days and days. I mean, that really hasn't happened. There's nothing that we really can't get past. But we also support each other. We support each other's happiness and we try to do what we can for the other person. It's not about sacrifice. It's about making small, loving compromises to support the other person. So like I said, there's a lot to unpack with the silent treatment. We're just about out of time, but what I'm going to do is, after I say my thank yous and goodbyes, during the outro, I'm going to read you an email that um, really inspired this episode. So thanks for tuning in. Be right back, and we'll, uh, we'll close the show after this. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Overwhelmed Brain. I want to thank David and Lauren for joining the patron program. Their monthly support through the patron program, along with every other patron member, is how we keep going, is how we keep spreading the good word around the world and um, trying to make the world a little bit more toxic-free. Let's make a toxic-free world. Go to patron.theoverwhelmedbrain.com. Thank you, existing patron members. Thank you, David and Lauren. I appreciate you. And also thank you to Susan, who used the donate button on the website for her donation. She has chosen to make that a monthly donation. You're now a sustaining member of the show, and the more people we have like that, the more goodness we can spread around the world. If you find value in this show and you want to donate or be a patron, go to theoverwhelmedbrain.com and you'll see both the donate and the patron buttons available and you can do your part if you'd like to do that as well. Also, the patron program offers private episodes and workbooks and worksheets. So not only do you give, but you also get back. So thank you again. I also want to thank our sponsor, Kaya Biotics. I'm telling you, I just feel better. I was talking to my contact over at Kaya Biotics and he's like, okay, keep me informed. Let me know what's going on. I want to I want to hear your progress. Uh, and I said, okay, you bet. I will. I'll even update people on the show. So I want you to check them out. Go to Kaya Biotics, K-A-Y-A Biotics.com and use the promo code BRAIN during checkout to get $15 off your first order. And I am currently working on the Safe Empowerment System. Safe stands for Social Anxiety, Freedom, and Ease. This is an audio program for those of you living with social anxiety day after day, which can be quite an interruption to feeling normal. Don't you just want to feel normal? The Safe Empowerment System comes out December 2018, but you can pre-order it today for 30% off by visiting theoverwhelmedbrain.com forward slash safe. And while you're there, take the survey. The survey uh, asks you about your levels of anxiety. Your responses make up the product. So if you're looking for answers for your anxiety, add your responses to the survey. Anxiety shouldn't be your normal. Use what I call the Safe System Mini Audio Pods to tackle anxiety as it's happening so you can dissolve or diminish it as soon as it starts. Think of it as your emergency anxiety toolkit. Theoverwhelmedbrain.com forward slash safe. And we talked about emotional abuse today. If you're getting that silent treatment and it's making your relationship harder and harder to cope with, check out the Mean Workbook. Go to loveandabuse.com and find out if you're in an emotionally abusive relationship. I hope not, but it's better to know than to keep scratching your head and wondering if you're going crazy. And finally, I'd like to thank Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com for some of the music transitions in the overwhelmed brain. And like I said, I'm going to read you a quick email on uh, the silent treatment. 
This is what inspired this episode today. I'm going to call this person Sarah. And uh, Sarah says, wow, I've read a lot about the silent treatment, but to read it from the point of view of someone who actually used it really helped me understand why my partner use it, would use it against me. He's killing me. And the wonderful thing is you talked about how you knew that and recommended not doing it. My partner goes silent when I call him on his anger. He can hold on to anger for days, even weeks. And even if it has nothing to do with me, I still have to live with him. He's giving me the silent treatment right now. And your article helped me deal with the emotional pain. Thank you so much. All right, Sarah. Um, she's talking about an article I wrote at theoverwhelmedbrain.com. If you want to read that, just type in silent treatment in the search field and you'll find it. But what Sarah might be dealing with could be a mix of emotional abuse. It also could be that processing time that he needs. So this is what came up in our second segment today, Sarah, is that is this his way of making you feel bad or his way of I need space to process this? Because depending on your perception of what it really is, you know, depending on if that's really him wanting to make you feel bad, then okay, we have a different problem. But the way you described it, especially because he's not even angry, angry at you sometimes, might mean that he needs more processing time than most people. I still say, you know, it's great to express this. It's great to have someone, if he feels safe with you to express these things, to have him express them. You know, what's going on with you? And I'm sure you've asked all the questions. Where are you? Connect with me. Why won't you share this with me? I'm supposed to be the one you're, you should share anything with. What's wrong? What's wrong? And I'm sure he feels that energy even when you're not asking those questions. So here's the thing. Um, one part of this is that if he needs processing time, he's one of these people that processes anger and doesn't know what to do about it and he just wants to punch someone and he knows that's a bad idea so he needs more time to process it what do i do with it he doesn't have maybe some of the processing skills or coping mechanisms that other people have so he does it in his own way and it can take days or weeks unfortunately for him to go through that but what can help with that if that's the case and he's not using a, this against you for some reason or wanting to make you feel bad, if that's the case, if he needs all this time to process, your best bet, well, one of your best bets is to approach him and say, hey, I know you need time to process. I'm here when you're ready. I'm here when you're ready to come back and connect. Now, what that means is you literally let him go. And what that means is you seek nothing from him. You don't put any expectations on him. Now, this sounds unfair, and I don't know your whole story, but I bet you're thinking, yeah, but what about my needs? What about the my need for connection, my need for love? I don't even know if he even likes me during this time. You know, these were my thoughts. I believe that that's what my wife was saying. You know, I don't even know if he likes me when he's giving me the silent treatment. But let's just say that, um, you didn't tell me this, but when he comes back, when he's no longer silent, that he's a loving, kind, and generous, and supportive person. But when he gets angry, he goes into that place. So when I'm angry, and I'm when a lot of people are angry, we might need space to process it. He might need more space and time to process than maybe most people. But let's just say that um, when he comes back, he is, quote, normal. He is good to be around and, and supportive and loving and stuff like that. In order for him to come back, he may need someone to do a little something extra special for him. And that is the letting go. That is the salesman coming up to you at the store and saying, hey, my name is Roy. I'll be over here if you need me. And then they leave you alone. So you don't have that pressure of sales. <laughs> In this case, with the silence treatment, you don't have the pressure from someone that says, what's wrong? What's going on with you? Why aren't you sharing? If that pressure is taken off and you then go pursue your own interests, whatever that means, you could go watch TV, go to work, play with your kids, go see a neighbor, go see a friend. You just do your own thing without expecting anything from him. The likelihood that he'll come back sooner is great. 
Like I said, I don't know your situation. I don't know if this is going to be 100% effective. But what I've learned is that when people have that processing time, it doesn't have to take as long as it normally does, but it ends up being longer when we pressure them to hurry it up in some way. When we pressure someone in a way of saying, what's wrong? Why aren't you sharing? What's going on with you? And then we get mad at them or we become depressed ourselves, maybe not depressed, but sad or disappointed or it could turn into depression where we just feel like we're left out of their lives. And then, like I said earlier, maybe feel unlovable, unworthy. We take it on. So that's the reason I asked, does he come back? Is he loving? Because if he, if he does come back and he is loving and he is everything that you want, then it sounds like that your relationship is generally that way, but he needs this processing time. So right now his processing time is a long duration. It's, it's a long time and it's hard to go through. But I want you to practice this the next time this happens. If it's happening now, practice this. Remove all expectations of him returning. And that doesn't mean he won't, because I'm pretty sure he will from what you're saying. But remove all expectation. Don't expect anything from him. Know that he's in that space and give him that space and allow him to have it. And this is the hard part for as long as he needs it. Because as soon as you put any amount of pressure on and he's still processing, what it does is compounds the negativity inside of him. So as he's processing the anger and he can go through his own stuff, if he also feels the pressure of someone saying, when are you going to return? What's going on? Why aren't you sharing? Then it's going to take him a longer time to process that. You know, that's my guess. And he won't come back for a while. So what does that mean? Why should you do this? Is it unfair to you? Yes, it's it's sort of unfair. It's a lot unfair because he goes away for days or weeks. That's, that's unfair. But what would happen if his silent time shortened? What would happen if it, instead of days or weeks, it was hours or days or minutes or hours? What would happen if he felt free to process and felt no pressure from anyone else to hurry up that processing or express himself, what would happen inside of him where he felt safe to be himself, even if that meant silence, even if that meant disconnection, even if that meant some separation time, some alone time? What would happen? I know what would happen with me. When my girlfriend says, hey, it sounds like you need to process this for a while and I'll leave you alone, after about... 15 minutes, 20 minutes, a half an hour, I feel no pressure from her. I want to return to her. I want to come back because she has made me feel good about myself. She has made me feel okay to be not okay. So this might be a path for you, Sarah. You may have tried this. I don't know. This might be emotional abuse. I don't know. There's not enough information here. Um, but from the way you described it, when he's angry at other people, he is, he's also silent with you. So it may just be the way he copes. Hopefully he finds faster, more efficient coping mechanisms. But if this is what he's used to and this is what he does, maybe he needs to go through it. And if you can show up as that special person, because you will need to make some of those loving compromises in order to do this. But as an experiment, try it. If you haven't already, just try it and see what happens. Thank you so much for sharing this, Sarah. I hope this helps. And I hope your relationship is not on the emotional abuse spectrum so that um, maybe you can get through this and maybe the relationship will improve. But no matter what, no matter where you are in your life, in your relationships, just keep an open mind so that you can step into your power. This will help you be firm in your decisions and actions so that you can create the life you want. Always take steps to grow and evolve. You are powerful beyond measure. And above all, and this is something I absolutely know to be true about you, you are amazing.